Hi, this is Mr. New again, and welcome to Adobe Illustrator CS5 for East Career and Technical Academy. In this episode, we are going to be exploring the shape modes in the Pathfinder tool, as well as the shape builder tool. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, if you do not have the Pathfinder over here on the right hand side in your palette menu, we can go up to Window and then come down to Pathfinder and select that and then it will open up on your desktop. You would then need to just drag it on in and attach it into your palettes. Uh, we're going to explore the first four and we're going to find a kind of a fun way to do that. I'm going to first start out by creating a couple of circles using the ellipse tool. I'm going to choose a stroke. Let's go with a stroke of five points and we're going to find a fill color of kind of a medium orange there. As I click and drag, I'm holding the shift key down to constrain. And now what I'm going to do is I can hold the command key to bring my selection tool back. And if I also hold my option key down while I am hovering over the path, I get a double arrow. Now, this is going to allow me to click, drag, and duplicate the object that I'm dragging. So as I drag the circle over, if I let go, I now have two circles, one directly next to the other. So with this, we're going to start with our shape modes. Hold the command key down, click and drag to select both items. And I'm going to go to the shape mode and click on Unite. So now what has happened is both of those shapes have become one single shape now. We're going to create a pumpkin. So let's go ahead now and get our polygon tool. And we're going to go ahead and create a triangle. So if I pull that out and hit my down arrow, I can bring it down to a single shape of a triangle. And if I hold my shift key down, it will constrain it. And let's go about that size. And I'm going to go back to my selection tool. Click and drag that down. I'm also going to select a fill color of black. These are going to be the eyes. And now if I hold the command key down again, hover over the path, hold the option key down, click and drag, I can create another eye. And if I click and drag again, I've created a nose. And now we're going to use another one of the tools in order to create the mouth. First, let's go ahead and nudge that over a bit. There we go. So I'm going to create a mouth. The way I'm going to create the mouth is with two different ellipses. Let's create it out of the box here. There's my first ellipse. That's going to be the bottom part. And what I want is just the bottom part of this. So let's drag another one down and use my arrows to nudge that over into place. So what I have here is an ellipse on top of an ellipse. If I select both of these, notice I actually have this outer section this inner shape and this bottom shape. What I really want is the bottom shape. So if I go to my next tool, the minus front, it's going to delete the shape that is in front, which is the larger ellipse on top. Click, and now I have a mouth left over. So if I go ahead and get my selection tool, drag that up into place, I now have the mouth. Let's go ahead and click off of that. The last thing I want to do is I need to create a stem. Well, we need to think about how that stem is going to be created. and we need to think of it in shapes. Now, yes, we could draw one out, but so far everything has been pretty exact. So let's go ahead and for the sake of being able to see better, let's go with no fill. We'll keep our stroke at five points. We'll go with our ellipse tool. And what I want is a stem kind of a shape. So we're gonna start with kind of an oblong oval a little bit, like right there. And I'm gonna create another one right about like that. And let's nudge that up. What I want to do is I want to take this piece that's right over here on the right, and that's going to wind up being my stem. I'm going to create one more oval right up here to kind of cut the top of that stem off right there. So now if you notice this shape that's all by itself, that's the piece that we're really looking at. That's what I want. The rest of this is just to help to create that. I'm going to select all of those objects. And we're not going to go with the intersect, but we're going to go with the exclude tool. What this is going to do is it's going to exclude all of the objects that are intersecting. So if I click exclude, and now if I go ahead and get my selection tool, I'm going to double click on the path of this one that I want to keep, double click again. It has now been selected and it's removed from the rest of the group. I can now actually double click on these other objects to isolate them and just delete them. 
So I'll double click, double click again, double click, double click again, there we go, delete. And now if I double click on this, I have this one object left over. Let's go ahead and drag that on into place for right now. And I'm going to tilt it some more because I like my top to be tilted. Nudge it into place right there. We do need to do two things. One, I want to color it in. And two, I want to move it to the back behind the pumpkin. So let's color it in first. Let's go ahead into the group. And I'm going to pick kind of a medium brown for that stem. And now with it still selected, I go to Object, Arrange, and Send to Back. And now I have my stem for my pumpkin. There's still one more shape mode we have not used yet, and that's intersect. We're gonna go ahead and create another shape. Let's go ahead with our ellipse one more time. And this time I'm going to create an oval right about like that. I'm going to command, option click, and drag up. So now I have these two objects. I will select them both. And if I click on that third one, intersect, has now left me with a football shaped object I can later go ahead and add some, add some laces to it, and now I've got a football. Those are the four tools that we have at our disposal in the shape mode. We'll explore the pathfinders at another lesson. I do want to show you one more tool, and that is the shape builder tool. Before we can use that, though, we need to create an object that we're going to be able to work with. Let's go ahead and have no fill. We'll keep our black stroke of five. I'm going back to my ellipse, and I'm gonna zoom in to this area down here at the bottom, and I'm gonna create an ellipse. And remember from the last class, we did the rotate tool. We're gonna to do that again. So I'm gonna grab my rotation tool, hover on the edge, hold the shift key down, click and drag, hold the option key and let go. I'm gonna do that again. Shift, click, drag, option, let go. One more time, shift, click, option, let go. Okay, so we have this shape going on. What we're gonna do with this is we're going to create like a flower outline, but we're gonna have a little bit more of an ornate center cut out of it. So let's go ahead and first we are going to select everything. So we're gonna select that entire object. We're going to click on the Shape Builder tool. And now notice as I hover over different parts of this shape, it highlights. And not only does it highlight, I have a little plus sign next to my cursor. If I click and drag across sections of this, it is selecting all of those pieces. So if I clicked over that and let go, those all now become one shape. Now notice that I cannot bend this line, it has to go in a straight line, but as long as that plus sign is there, it's going to create that object that is being highlighted. So one more time, let's go through these. So now this whole outer part of the flower is one shape. The inner part though, I want that to be a cutout. Notice it still says plus. If I highlight and fill those now, those will have a fill, but if I hold the option key down, notice that my plus turned to a minus. If I click in this one and drag through, those have now become a cutout. I'll drag through these, and two more of those, and then one more, there we go. And I know this is a cutout, and the way I can prove it, if I go ahead and hit my selection tool, this is still selected, let's pick a color and click off of it. The inside is now removed. If I was to put an object behind it, let's go ahead and just create something really quick change that color to say red, and we're gonna send that to the back object, arrange, send to back. It will actually show up behind that flower and be able to be seen through. Now, I'm gonna do one more thing. Let's get rid of this. That was just to prove a point. Let's move our flower off to the side. I'm gonna create a few other random shapes out here. Let's go with a circle, a rectangle, and I'm gonna go with a star be nice and random here. We'll move our star down a little bit. Okay. All right, so we have these shapes. And what I want to show you is on the Shape Builder tool, we have another option that's actually pretty cool. If I double click on that, I get a Shape Builder dialog box. I have the ability to color in sections as I go. I don't have to create the shape and then go back and color. Let's go ahead and click on Cursor Swatch Preview. Click OK, and I'm going to go ahead and open up my swatches panel so I can see what happens. I can actually start on any color out here. 
But first I want to select all three of these objects. So now I get that color palette over my cursor, very similar to what I had when I did the paint bucket tool. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to pick this as one shape. So let's go ahead and make that be a dark orange. And I'm going to go back to my blue. And this time I'm going to click and drag to select both of those shapes and let go. And now that becomes blue. I want to select both of these two. Let's make that a green. Click, drag, and make that green. And we'll leave the last shape as yellow. But we need to select them both so they become one shape. So now those become one shape as well. Let's go ahead and drag and make that as part of it as well too. So now I have selected these different shapes and they're actually, if I was to go to my selection tool, click and drag, that is a shape all by itself. So these have been busted apart as shapes. And here's one last piece that was kind of left behind. So all of these shapes are now independent shapes, but they all kind of fit together as a puzzle piece. But the point I wanted to make was that I can do a swatch preview and add color as I go. Okay, so that's it for now. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Have fun.